A man who was shot at Virginia Tech 12 years ago thought he had recovered until he found out he was slowly being poisoned by the lead bullet still lodged in his body. 10 News anchor Rachel Lucas shows us what he has to say about the lasting impact of gun violence. I survived the shooting at Virginia Tech in 2007 and now I'm having to survive it again in 2019. You know, in a whole nother way. It's an invisible injury, but for Colin Goddard, it's a relentless reminder of the past. It's the most terrifying experience of my life. It was just a constant sound of gunfire. Shot four times during French class at Virginia Tech, Colin is considered one of the lucky ones, having survived the worst school shooting in U.S. history. One bullet went in and out of his shoulder. Three others pierced his body and shattered into tiny pieces. Doctor said it was too risky to remove them. When I, my wounds healed, I still had you know three bullets uh, in my body, I mean, a bunch of little pieces, and the rest of the pieces that I was told you know it would just kind of be with me forever and it wouldn't be a problem. But it is a problem. Turns out the bullets are still trying to kill him. Colin suffers from lead poisoning. At one point, his levels were seven times higher than what's considered safe. Dr. Robert Bunning at MedSAR National Rehabilitation Hospital in D.C. says most people aren't even aware of the risk. These x-ray scans show the bullet fragments in two of his patients and how difficult they are to reach. For some victims, it can take years to develop symptoms. There's been one case report of a person who had symptoms that occurred 51 years after. Uh, a bullet injury. Almost a decade after Colin was shot, he noticed subtle changes to his health, but chalked it up to a busy schedule, balancing grad school and a growing family. You know, the short-term symptoms of lead poisoning are, are kind of hard to, hard to recognize, right? It's like things like fatigue, irritability, memory loss, stomach pain. I had, at that point when I learned about this, was in graduate school. I had a two-year-old, was about to have another one, and he was trying to find a job. I mean, I was you know, a lot of things going on in life that cause all those things. His mother encouraged him to get a blood test after reading an article about the lasting impact of lead ammunition on shooting survivors. Since the diagnosis, Colin has had hip surgery to remove more bullet fragments, and he's tried chelation therapy to clear the toxic metal from his body. I tried it for a month. You know, I had to take like 30 pills a day, every day breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I want to sound the alarm for all the other survivors out there who, who don't know about this, right? Who were just like me and, you know, were sent from the hospital and said, you'll be fine, you know, have a good rest of your life. What's been driving me forward to try to do something is to try to stop the long-term impacts from happening, which are kidney failure, cognitive decline, you know, a bunch of really intense things that, you know, kind of once they happen, there's no, like, undoing that. I'm Rachel Lucas, 10 News, working for you.